Hey there everyone, welcome to the One Brain Four Wheels channel. It's Garrett here like always, and in today's video, as you guys can tell, I got the big old white 77 Cadillac Eldorado here in the garage, and specifically, we're gonna be replacing this guy. If you guys can't tell what it is, it is the power antenna relay. And so without further ado, let's get started. Now, before we get started, some of you guys might be wondering why you're replacing the relay. I feel like it's probably pretty common sense, but just in case you guys are wondering the whole story, the one I currently have installed, which presumably is the original one, because I've never touched it, although I don't know what other owners have done previously, but the one that's currently installed has no problem raising the antenna and doing all the functions manually when you go ahead and rock the switch up and down. The problem is, is that more often than not, when I turn the car off or turn off the radio, the antenna just sits there up fully raised, and I actually have to go and manually via the little button inside the cab lower it down and that's very annoying so I'm hoping that using this uh, you know new to me relay will hopefully solve that problem and get me by for a few more years at least or longer all right so to actually get started with this project we first need to uninstall the original relay and that's going to be found underneath the dash but we can go ahead and access it through the glove box all right so this part's pretty straightforward going in through the glove box you guys will actually notice that up above the glove box, there's a wide open opening into the, you know, the inner workings of the dashboard. And if we kind of go in a little bit deeper, let me switch hands. And up on the right hand side, let's not look at the light, it's a little bright there. Sorry for the bad camera workmanship. But coming up in here, boom, right there. That metallic guy with the two connectors, that is your relay that you're gonna be replacing today. As you can see, it's actually connected. I already took one of them out, but it's uh, two 5 16 head screws right into the side of the car there, um, or you know the inner frame of the dashboard. So let's go ahead and remove those two, and then that relay with the wire, you can just pull it straight through the uh, glove box here, and then you can disconnect it. All right, so here's the relay dismounted from the vehicle, but still wired up. So you can see it's composed of two blocks of wiring connectors, the one closest to you right now uh, with the red and white wires, has two clips, one on each side, and then the one you know farther back has one clip around the other side. So I'll kind of spin around right there. So all you need to do is just undo those clips like normal and go ahead and release those. That way we can release the relay. And then I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna do with the wiring. Now, the real trick with this project is something I've failed to mention up to this point. These two relays, the new and the old one, they're not the same part. So for this generation of Eldorado, they actually use two different part numbers for the power antenna relay. So you can see the old one here. This was put on vehicles, I believe, from the beginning of this generation up until very early 1977, which is what this car here is. Then the new one over here was used just for the rest of 77 and then 78. And I think later on, um, the whole new Eldorados, I believe they used those as well and other Cadillacs and stuff like that. But basically what I've come to learn is that they actually are equivalent, or at least it could be used in the same application. You just have to move some wires around. And you guys can see, I don't know if you guys can actually tell, but on the old one, you pretty much had, there are both uh, three spade connectors, both of them. One had three in a line. The other one had kind of like a T pattern. You can see that's replicated on both of them. They're just oriented a little bit differently. So the key with this project is going to be looking at some wiring diagrams and switching around the wires as needed. But yeah, so it's good to know that, you know, even if you can't find the exact part you need, you might be able to look around and find some equivalent pieces that you can go ahead and incorporate into your own vehicle and make it work. But let's go ahead and jump into the car and go ahead and take care of this. All right, so it's been at least a month since I last touched this project, as you guys can tell from my lack of hair, both up here and on here, I think. Um, but I did want to get back into this project and help you guys kind of figure out the configuration of the wires to make that newer relay work in this older vehicle. And so in order to help you guys with that, below I will have a link to the two wiring diagrams that will help you out. Uh, the first one was used up until early 77, that's this car, using that older relay style. And then the second link for the wiring diagram, that's going to be the one used in the late 77 and on, utilizing that second model of power antenna relay, which we're going to be using today. All right, so with that information in hand, both the old and the new wiring diagrams, you know, hopefully looking at the wiring setup I've got here with the new setup, using the new relay in the 77 Eldorado, hopefully it all makes sense. If you guys can't tell already, this first connector here with the three in a line, those wires did not change configuration at all. So you can literally just unplug it from the previous relay and plug it right into this one. No changes necessary. However, the case is a little different for the secondary connector that looks like it's a little T connector. So now if you don't really like looking at wiring diagrams, I will go ahead and just kind of skip forward and show you guys what you need to do. Basically, 
basically the three wires on here, they kind of did a little loop in a clockwise motion. So originally you'll remember, so let's just say right now, let's call the position, there's three positions. Let's say the white one is number one, the red one right now is a number two, and the black one's a number three. Well, before in the old configuration, they were all reversed. So the red one was previously in position one, the white one was in position three, and the black one was in position two. So basically just take all these wires and make them go back a position. So black would have been here, the red would have been where the white one is, and the white one would have been where the black is. And that was the old position. So we literally just kind of rotated them clockwise. If you were looking at it like in the T shape, just move them clockwise, and that would have been, that would be the current position now compared to the last. So I hope that kind of makes sense. But if you just want to kind of, you know, cheat and skip, look at the wires I've got going into this and make yours match that. And speaking of reconfiguring the wiring layout, that begs the question, well, how do you do that while maintaining these clips? You know, if you look online on YouTube and stuff, a lot of clips and more newer cars, you know, there's a method of like prying like paper clips or something in there and kind of wedging the little internal plastic tab, you know, allowing you to pull the wires out. But these ones actually on both sides, I'm not taking this all apart because I have it in now. But on both sides of this, there's actually um, a nice little external flap of plastic that has a clip that goes in. I'll kind of show you guys now. See, it kind of goes in and clamps right there onto your wire. And then below that, I don't know if you guys can kind of see, but there's like a metal tab on the wiring connector internally. And so when you take this little tab here, uh, sorry for my bitten nails, but uh, you know, when that tab is depressed like so, that then blocks that uh, metal tab that's connected to the wire from pulling out, thus securing it. So when you want to rearrange all those wires, instead of, you know, cutting things and having to like splice weird bits or, you know, however you might think of doing it, it's actually really nice to give it a nice clean, you know, factory look by just taking out that connector like you would when you change the relay, using a little flathead screwdriver to pop out all the external little flap clips on here. And then the wires just slip right on out and you can reconfigure them however they need to be. Should look like this when you're all done. Um, and that's about it. And you know, now we're gonna go ahead and test out the relay, but I can tell you guys from experience, it works. All right, just kidding. I'm not quite done with this project because as you guys might be able to tell right now, looking at the new relay sitting up underneath the dash, the mounting bracket holes on the new one don't quite line up with the old one. As you can see, the, the tab there coming off of the new relay is kind of resting up against the metal that's protruding out of the second mounting hole for the last relay, the original one. So what I'm thinking I'm going to have to do is just go ahead and, you know, mount it at a slightly different angle than the previous one was in that, you know, I'll go ahead and drill another hole that will be used for this new relay a couple centimeters down farther away from the other previous hole. So that way this one can also have two screws holding it into place. Not a big deal, although it would be a little tricky getting a drill in here with the dash all assembled. So you have two options here. You can just really tighten down that one. It's all metal on metal, so it won't be a problem, you know, tightening as much as you want. And you just leave it like that. I don't think it's gonna be an issue. Or if you're ever gonna take apart the dash, then just go ahead and drill out that second hole when you have time. Um, you know, when you're doing that, which I actually will be changing out this dash pretty soon, hopefully to a red one. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that and just leave this like this for now. But you guys have options. Leaving it like this, I don't think would be a terrible idea. You know, just, you know, it would work out fine, I think. But just letting you guys know that there will be an optional last step should you go ahead and do this project for yourself. Also, if this is not what you look like working on this project and you're doing something wrong, but honestly, not too bad. But definitely, you got to be willing to finagle yourself in wherever you can. Um, otherwise, we're going to end up having to take apart this whole dash. And I didn't want to do that right now. So this is kind of the working conditions we're in right now. All right, so we've got the new relay all hooked up. We've got our switch in auto up, perfect. We got the key in the ignition. I think we're ready to go on one, two, three. Let's put on some tunes. And that's, does that power the radio? Yes, it sure does, okay. Radio is on, it's static. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. It's just on enough to see the antenna is raised. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the radio. And at the same time, that antenna should start going down automatically. And you guys can hear, it does. Huzzah! That, my friends, is a beautifully working power antenna relay, and I consider this project finished. 
successfully. All right, and just like that, we've completed our project, and I think this video is finished. But uh, like always, in the description below, I'll go ahead and put the part number for that new antenna relay, the newer one, I should say. Um, and if you guys found the video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. I would really appreciate it, and it will help get the video higher up in the search results so other Cadillac enthusiasts will be able to find helpful little tips like this, um, you know, on their search, just like you and I. And if you guys want to see more videos of me doing, you know, nice little restoration projects with the 77 Cadillac Eldorado or other how-to videos and whatnot with the 2003 Suburban, the 1999 Corvette, 1999, yes, it is. Too many cars, I can't remember the years. Uh, the 1988 Pontiac Fiero, the 2016 Jeep Grand Cherokee behind me, and any other cars I get my hands on. Uh, then please subscribe to the channel One Brain, Four Wheels. And until next time, guys, I hope you have a fantastic day. Thanks again so much for watching. Hope this video helps. Take care.